a complete guide to applying Singapore PR. So this is a comprehensive guide that I am presenting here. If there is a single video that you want to watch on this topic, which explains right from the beginning till the end the complete process, then this is that video. In this video, I am going to cover these topics starting with eligibility, best time to apply and all the way up to results and post approval process and what to do in case of rejection. Now for the convenience of people who watch this video, I have put in the chapters in this video. So if you really check the YouTube video timeline, you will find that each chapter has been separately identified. So let's start with the video. And the first question that comes to our mind is what is the PR eligibility? Who are the people who are allowed to file the PR application in Singapore? So these people are holder of an employment pass or S pass and their dependents can apply for permanent residency. This is called as PTS, uh, Professional, Technical and Skilled Person category. Spouse of a Singapore citizen or a PR can apply for uh, permanent residency. Unmarried child age below 21 who is of a Singapore citizen or PR can apply for PR uh, filing. Age parents of a Singapore citizen can file PR. Now note here, this privilege is only for the parents of a Singapore citizen. A PR's parent cannot file for their own PR. Students studying in Singapore and specific criteria only, that means those students who are in local education stream and who has passed at least one national level examination, that is PSLE, O level, A level or N level are qualified to apply for Singapore permanent residency. And the last one is foreign investors who are interested in settling in Singapore can apply under GIP, Global Investor Program. Now, majority of the cases of PR filed every year falls in the first category that is under PTS scheme, Skilled Migration Program. Now, out of all these categories, in case of first FIU, you must be already staying in Singapore under some reason or the other. Only the last category that is a foreign investor can apply and file permanent residency application while overseas. In all other cases, PR cannot be filed from overseas. You must have worked in Singapore, stayed in Singapore or you have family connections with somebody in Singapore. So now expanding on this, holder of an employment pass or S pass and their dependents. This as I mentioned scheme is called as professional, technical and skilled worker scheme. You can apply after 6 months after arrival in Singapore. So if you are on em employment pass and if you have completed 6 months or more period, then you can file this application. However, I generally don't recommend doing this because there are high chances that your PR will get rejected if you apply too early. And one more point to note, PEP, Personalized Employment Pass and Entry Pass Holders and if their dependents are in Singapore, they are also included under this scheme. Now since this scheme constitutes more than 80% of the applications every year, rest of the discussion in this presentation is focused on this scheme only. So the next question then is, what is the best time to apply PR in Singapore? Frankly speaking, there is no specific best time. When you are ready, you can apply. However, I will generally recommend that you should wait for some time and at least get one completed year of IRS assessment. So your 12 months assessment should be completed in Singapore. That might mean you might have to wait for one, one and a half year or maybe slightly more also depending upon when you landed in Singapore. For Indians, I will recommend that they should wait for at least two to three years. Now, there is no point in applying PR earlier than this period. 
आई नो वन इंडियन फॅमिली हु अप्लाइड फॉर परमनंट रेसिडेन्सी आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ दे लँडेड इन सिंगापूर नाव देर इज नो पॉइंट इन डुईंग सो बिकॉज मोस्ट लाईकली देअर ॲप्लिकेशन विल बी रिजेक्टेड अँड इट विल ऑल्सो अननेसेसरीली क्रिएट सम काइंड ऑफ बॅड रेकॉर्ड विथ आय सी ए इन केस युअर प्रिव्हियस परमनंट रेसिडेन्सी ॲप्लिकेशन हॅज बीन रिजेक्टेड अँड इफ यू आर रिअप्लाइंग फॉर सेकंड ऑर थर्ड टाइम देन थिंक हाऊ यू कॅन प्रेझेंट मोर स्ट्रॉंगर प्रोफाईल डोंट जस्ट सेंड द सेम डॉक्युमेंट्स यू यूज लास्ट टाइम Now here we will have a look on some statistics about PR approvals. So here I am presenting population breakup applicants and PR success ratio for year 2008 versus year 2020. So the non-resident population in 2008 was 1.19 million which grew to 1.64 million in 2020. Out of this non-resident population, the population that is qualified to apply for PR, that means the people who are EP, S-pass holders, TEP holders, intra-pass holders and dependent pass holders, in 2008 was around 490,000. And the same population in 2020 is around 672,000. If we presume that the population applying pr every year is 25% out of this then that means 122000 people applied for pr in 2008 where a same number grew to 168000 in 2020 from the government published data we know total pr granted in 2008 were 79167 and in 2020 it is 27500 Which, which means it has dropped considerably so the success ratio for 2008 is 64.5% that means roughly two people out of three applicant got their pr approved but same ratio goes down to 16.34% in 2020 and that means roughly one person out of six applicants got their pr approved So as you see over the years getting Singapore PR is becoming quite difficult there are too many applicants today and the spaces available are limited so as a result ICA has tightened the rules because they have lot of options now if there are so many applicants then ICA will obviously select the most promising one to be PR in Singapore So now submitting minimum required documents which are written on the ICA website is not enough that was a practice 10 years back so when i applied my pr i just submitted at that time minimum required documents but that was okay at that time in 2004 even before 2008 what i am showing here but now that approach is not enough so at this point of time i will highlight that you can consider engaging an agent Now bear with me this is only one slide over here before i continue with the main discussion an agent can review your profile in depth agent means the companies who provide pr application filing services that is a company like ours agents can also help you to strengthen your profile so agent can give you tips and steps work out an action plan for you with which you can improve your score agents will also ensure that there are no errors in the documents and i know how many documents come with error the percentage is quite high actually an agent can also help to write an impressive cover letter and present a strong case to ica so that they can approve your pr moving on to the next slide then you now need to decide whether you are going to file for singapore permanent residency or not and you need to consider for this advantages and disadvantages so here i am going to give some advantages first is flexibility now as a pr you are allowed to stay in singapore for the duration of your rep reentry permit in case of employment pass you will have to leave the country if you lose job within 30 days and that's too much risk and too much rigidity as a pr if you lose your job you have significant time available to find another job and get gainfully employed so that's not a problem 
Second point is that you have better career option. Because employment pass always needs a pass application, EP application to Ministry of Manpower, companies are often reluctant to do that. But if you are a PR, you are considered as a local workforce and you are allowed to join any company as an employee. Obviously, your career options improve. The next one is entrepreneurial opportunities open for you. As an EP holder, you must be working only for the company which has sponsored your employment pass. You cannot start another company and become director of that. However, if you are a Singapore PR and if you are in a job, still you can start another company, become director of that company, maybe run that company on a part-time basis for a few months or a year. And if success is seen, then you can shift to that on a full-fledged basis. So there is a significant flexibility on entrepreneurial option here. You can buy resell HDB flat and you have to pay only low ABSD. So as an employment pass holder, you are treated as a foreigner and you cannot buy HDB flat. You will be allowed to only buy condominium flat if on EP. When you become a Singapore permanent resident, all the resell flat market become open for you. And you know HDB flats prices are quite conservative. So you can buy a good HDB for around $400,000 to $500,000. Moreover, you have to pay only 5% of additional buyer stamp duty, which in case of foreigner is at 20%. Local education for your kids is available. The quality of local education is very good. Moreover, the fees are quite reasonable. You also get medical subsidies for your medical conditions. If you have to undergo any operation or medical treatment, then depending upon the ward in which you are admitted, your charges will depend. Most of the times you will get subsidies and if you are in class C ward or class B ward, the charges are quite low. Singapore PR is a part to citizenship, which is actually the full-fledged settlement in Singapore. You also get included in CPF plan and CPF rates. CPF return rates or the interest rates that CPF offers are quite good at 4% or plus. Now moving on to the next slide, here are some disadvantages of Singapore PR or limitations of getting Singapore PR. First point is permanent residency itself is not permanent. So we call it permanent, but actually it is tied with a five year re-entry permit. So after every five years, you have to renew your re-entry permit and that to some extent depends upon your income generating capacity. If you are not economically active or if you have not filed taxes for last two years of this five years period, then your permanent residency or REP will get renewed only for one or two years at a time. So as such your PR itself is not permanent. The next point is there is a national service liability for your male child. As a first generation migrant, you are exempted from national service liability. However, your next generation, that is your son, will have to do national service and some people don't actually like this. So they try to find out a ways to avoid this. Your take home pay may reduce because of CPF. So what happens sometimes is when you become permanent resident, some part of salary from your salary will get deducted from your side and company will also put some more contribution. Now some companies say that just because you become PR, I will not increase your salary by 17%. Instead, I will adjust it backwards and I will give you same salary, but after adjusting for my CPF contribution. So as a result, your take home pay may get reduced significantly. The CPF amount is usually locked. You can use it for property, Medicare, and also for education of your kids. But otherwise, you cannot withdraw it and invest it lump sum somewhere. If as a Singapore PR, if you are buying an HDB unit, then one of the rules is that you must not hold any properties overseas. So if in your home country, if you are owning any properties, then in that case, you need to either dispose of or transfer it in the name of your relatives and that can have some risk. So what it means is you need to consider these advantages 
and disadvantages and decide carefully whether you really want to apply or not. Remember one thing, once you apply, you cannot go back. If, if the PR is approved, then you cannot go back and say that, hey, I don't want to really get this PR. I applied, but now I don't want it. That will be taken in a very negative sense. And one more point you need to decide is, are you applying with family or not? Now, it is strongly recommended that you apply with family. It is always beneficial because when you are applying with your family, it shows that you are committed to Singapore and your next generation is also going to make Singapore as your as their home. If there are any exceptional reasons because of which you are not including your family, then you need to specify that by a separate letter in your PR application. If you don't explain the reasons, most likely your application will get rejected. So if you have family, but you are alone applying for PR, chances are low. So moving on to the next slide then, what are the documents required for filing permanent residency application? So these are the documents which are required for you. You means main applicant, your passport copy, your home country's national ID card copy, if any, your EPDP card copy, birth certificate copy, marriage certificate copy if applying with family, educational certificate copies, six months pay slips. If you have any letters confirming your previous employment, those will be required. Then annexure 4A, confirmation by current employer and consent for IRS data. All these documents will be required for you. For your spouse, same documents will be required. But if your spouse is on, is on dependent path and is not working in Singapore, then six months paisley, previous testimonials, annexure 4A and consent for IRS is not required. So these points I have highlighted in yellow font. And for your children, passport copy, national ID copy, DP copy and birth certificate are required. Now these are the documents which are normally required in most of the cases. However, if your case is complex, then some more documents may be required. For example, if you have, if you are filing a PR application for any child which is from previous marriage, then your previous marriage certificate and the death certificate or the divorce certificate will be required. Similarly, if you are filing PR application for an illegitimate child, that is child out of a wedlock, then in that case, you might need to file an affidavit in the embassy of your country and get that affidavit to attach it with your PR application. So those documents we can advise you depending upon case to case basis. Now, once you have identified the documents, you will need to do some preparation, which I call it as a pre-filing preparation. So obviously compile all these documents. Check for errors. This is very important. Many documents sometimes have errors. The names are not spelled correctly. The record is incorrect. The details do not match. So all these kind of things ensure that those are not there. If any of the document has error, then in that case, you will have to take specific steps to correct that document and get it from your home country. Or if your embassy allows, carry out those procedures in Singapore. If any of the documents are in local language, you will need to do translation or affidavit. It is important that you have all these original documents in your custody. Remember, when you file PR application, you attach scan copies. However, when the PR is approved, you will have to show these original documents to the immigration officer. And always take your scans of these documents with a high resolution, good quality machine. Do not take photos from your mobile phone, which look kind of blur. So moving on to the next slide then, what are the common mistakes to avoid at this stage? So now you have not filed, you have compiled all the documents and you are going to file. And here are some of the mistakes that you avoid or before filing, if you can take any actions to correct this, please do so. The first thing I have already talked that is errors in the documents in the previous slide itself I mentioned. The next one, no social contribution or integration. 
So if you fall in this category, then please take some steps to show some social integration or do some social contribution because this factor is being valued by ICA. Applying too early for PR, that is a mistake. Don't do it. There are people I have seen who apply, six months is a timeline, so they will immediately after six months start applying for PR. The chances of approval are 99.99%. Now there is no point in applying in the hope that 0.01% you might get that PR. But the bad part is that Immigration and Checkpoint Authority may think that you are reckless and you are just applying with the hope that you will get a PR. Another mistake people do is they submit only minimum documents. So documents asked for, I explained, that is what people attach. They might have awards, they might have other contributions. They don't think of anything else. Just submit minimum documents and expect PR will come through. Another mistake people do is they submit too many documents. So they will attach the dance competition results of 20 years back, which they did it in the school. Maybe some singing competition in their college. No, that's don't attach all that. You need to attach additional documents, but that each additional document, you have to weigh whether it really makes sense and don't attach more than five or six additional documents. And the last mistake people do is they don't include any cover letter. Now cover letter is important because it will help you to showcase your profile to IC officer in a very impressive manner. So moving on to the next slide then, now comes the actual filing and payment part. So in this stage, you need to log into EPR system. This you can do it using your ThinkPass. There is a form which you can download. Now this is a procedure as of now. Maybe in future, uh, ICA may change it. So in case you are watching this video after some time, please keep note of this. So you can download the form in a PDF form. Then you can fill up that form on your computer. So there are places to fill up those details. There is no need to write with pen on that form. So don't print and write and then scan. Use electronic means that looks quite neat and there are any mistakes are avoided. Complete the form and after completing you have to upload it back to EPR system within seven days. So you have only seven days time. Attach scans of all the relevant documents. Then you have to file and tick some declarations and pay the prescribed fee. Now after few days, after this lodgement, you can start checking the status on the EPR system. So it will show you that it is in process and one day when the process is completed, it will tell you that result has been finalized. Now you have filed a form. The form is with ICA and ICA is going to take decision on your application. And here are the factors those will get considered for each application. So there are total 25 factors here. If you want, there is another video that I have prepared uh, in our channel, which explains each of these factor in detail. So again, if you understand all these points properly, what you can do, you can take every possible action to score on each possible point before you submit the application. But now, since you have filed the application, these are the factors which are being considered. And in principle, what immigration authorities are assessing is that your capability. Are you capable, educated and a good part to fit in the society? How much committed you are to Singapore? And are you likely to sink roots here? If after getting PR, after a few years, if you are likely to go back somewhere else, then it doesn't make sense for ICA to give PR to you. So this is the factor which is very much important. Are you likely to sink roots here? And the last point is, is your next generation likely to continue settling here? If you are married, if you have children, then what about next generation? Will they continue or will they go back? So now imagine a situation that you have a family, entire your family except male child is applying for permanent residency. Then in that case, it is obvious to ICA that your male child is not applying because 
he wants to avoid the national service liability and then it is also clear that your next generation is not likely to continue settling then obviously they have less inclination to approve such a pr application now here are some findings on pr quotas so these are from various sources which i have gathered so basically there are 30000 prs are approved as per ica and the ministry direction this government has declared so they have said that every year 30000 around that figure prs will get approved now for internal purposes they are divided in quarters so every quarter 7500 will get approved and that will even get further divided into sub categories which sub category is ic has not declared or has not disclosed it might be by industry it might be by age group it might be even by race we don't know that and then what happens is your application becomes a part of a pool and that pool for that quarter is compared with available places and if you are successful then you will get the response back if you are not then it will still be put into the next quarter's pool and then again it will be checked so depending upon various rules it might get approved this time next time or it might get rejected the next point is about profile changes while your pr is in process so now you have filed your pr but there is a change in your circumstances for example there is a change of job you get a new job and maybe there is a better salary so you should inform these details to ic most of the people once they file permanent residency application they will not normally contact back ica with any updates which is a mistake for example you might get a promotion in existing job or you might won an award something which is very prestigious or you might pass some new examination because of which your educational qualification has changed so keep this in mind filing a pr application does not mean that it has ended there itself for next 6 7 months whatever you are doing which changes your profile significantly you need to inform that might change chances in your favor a bit now is the time for result so you have filed a pr application and 6 to 9 months have passed now generally it is seen that if you get back results in 3 months or low then it is mostly a rejection if it takes longer time there are that is a good news because it means it is getting attention and there are still chances that it will get approved if you receive a thick envelope it means it is mostly approved because there will be lot of other papers along with the normal letter so now hopefully you would have got a positive result and it's a time to look at post approval process the things from here are quite easy because there is no wait now everything is in your control you will get many papers in the envelope and one of that thing will specify for the medical test so you and your family members will need to conduct this medical test i think children below 12 years or something like that are exempted from this medical test you can do this medical test at any clinic or any government uh, approved institution and those results along with your original documents the copies of which you have submitted at the time of application you will have to take it to ica to show it and pass it on to immigration officer after doing their procedure a temporary card will be issued to you a temporary paper confirmation will be issued to you and your employment pass cards will be collected and cancelled permanent card the kind of a plastic card will get issued later you also need to inform to your employer that your permanent residency has been approved and been issued and you are a permanent resident from a specific date so they can start calculating your cpf and depositing your cpf in your uh, cpf account your employer will anyway get a notification from ica and mom about this now the next point is what can you do in case of rejection so you have applied but ica rejected your case so there are two options and the first option is you can file an appeal but it makes sense to file an appeal if you can bring in some new significant factors to reconsider unless there is any reason for ica to change their stance there is no point in filing appeal 
In that case, you will be filing appeal for the sake of filing, but the result will be same. And other option is you can reapply after six months. So you can wait for six months and then again apply. By that time, maybe your salary has increased a bit, and at the same time, you are staying in Singapore has also increased. So because of that, you will get better chances. So with this, I conclude this presentation. So this is the summary complete process for filing PR application in Singapore. We have a lot of detailed videos on each of the topic. So in case you need more details or more information, please refer to the same. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel today. PR Application is a leading immigration consultancy company in Singapore.